Hello you guys, I'm Dreamon aka the Belgian Waffle and first I got to explain something to you guys about this video before I continue with the normal course of the video. What I got to explain to you guys is the title of this video. Why I'm calling this an actual review and not an impression or a beta preview is because of three simple reasons. The first reason being that games I've played in the past that were in their beta stage between one and three months before their official release date have never been able to correct their mistakes, bugs, glitches and imbalance. In fact, it's nigh impossible, so I don't expect to see any improvements in the full game until perhaps 3 or 6 months after the official release date. The second reason is because the developer team, who is called Respawn, ain't releasing much information on extra content that's gonna be available in the full game, which makes me a little bit suspicious and wonder if they're not doing some damage control, because this game has been hyped so much already and maybe the devs know that they're not gonna be able to deliver everything that we've hoped for. The third reason is because I myself am still doubting if I should buy this game at release or not. I know I will buy it someday, but I might just wait to see what the release date will bring and what it will be like in the first few months, because please do not forget what happened to the releases of a lot of other online games that were published by EA last year. Two huge examples were SimCity and Battlefield 4, so basically I'm making this my official review until I know for sure I can trust this game after it has been released. Now this is over, let's start with the game itself, shall we? Well, I don't know if you guys know about it, but Respawn is a company that actually consists mostly of ex-Call of Duty creators, which to be honest made me quite skeptic about the game at first, but after a while it didn't really help me back anymore, because the game looked addictive enough and seemed to have that fast-paced action that I missed for the last couple of years, so I tried it anyway. And it was good to be honest. In fact, you can say that, that this game sucks you in completely, because everything is going so fast that it's hard to focus on anything else than what's happening on your screen in front of you. I do have to say that from the footage and trailers I first of the game, I thought that the balance of this game seemed to me like it would be impossible to get it right during the testing stage of the game's development. But they actually did a good job on this part. Now you may wonder what seems balanced about a game where you can stomp players on foot with gigantic mech robots. Well, from the first moment I finished my first three rounds, I could immediately tell that I never felt outgunned or unfairly killed because of better weapons, because you actually all have equal abilities. Although, I think that the limited number of unlocks and classes might have something to do with this too. Because the lower the amount of classes you got, the easier it is to balance them with each other. But this also becomes a little problem because compared to Call of Duty or Battlefield the number of unlocks are actually very very limited. But that might improve in the full game though. But even in the beta of Battlefield 3 and 4 it had 5 times more the unlocks and abilities than is available in this beta of Titanfall. So I do not expect more than double the amount of unlocks in the full game than they currently have available in the beta. Which still leaves it at a very low number. So in terms of unlocks and achievements, the grinding horse between us gamers might not feel satisfied when playing this game. However, the action and pacing of the game makes more than up for this loss, at least for me personally. Because I'm usually that type of player that does not go for all the unlocks and classes, so I do not really care for many unlocks to be honest. As long as the gaming experience itself feels right to me. And I think that with Titanfall they hit that sweet spot, because the gameplay begs for more playtime from the player. So in terms of an addictive gameplay, this game earns big points. In fact, I could go as far as saying that this gameplay lends itself perfectly for official tournaments or competitions, which will drastically increase the lifespan of this game. So in terms of lifespan and gameplay addiction, this game will kick the ass of any Call of Duty game from the last couple of years. But in terms of content, it has to improve a lot. I think personally that the gameplay is amazing and brings a fresh new breeze within the first person genre. Now you can call this game an asymmetrical multiplayer, but actually that's not really the case, since both sides own the same amount of hardware and both have access to these huge PM mods called Titans. Now these Titans can be called down from a ship in orbit by each individual player and will land in a green circle that you can carefully place anywhere on the map within your line of sight. And once this Titan has landed, you can either control it yourself or just let the AI handle the Titan for you after you have left it. Talking about the AI, it will be a major letdown for many people who were complaining that this game was only gonna support 6 via 6 players maximum, because the lack of human players is supposed to be filled up by NPCs that fight right beside you. But they're absolute grunts with shit for brains, so the only challenge in this game lies within killing real players. However, that also makes it an interesting hide and seek battle because you never know who is a real player and who isn't. Although, after a while when you're used to the game, you can tell them apart easily due to the difference in movement and reaction speed you get from your opponent. So that's kind of a bummer. 
but otherwise I enjoy these fast paced battles with 6 vs 6 because a lower number of players doesn't really mean that it cannot be fun. I even thought it was more fun because it actually allows for a lot more intense team play. What I mean by that is that for example in Battlefield you will have a lot of idiots running around like headless chickens because there's such a huge number of players running around on one particular map. But once you're down to a 6 vs 6 match you really got to rely on each other as a team and you'll immediately notice that from the first match you play in Titanfall that it has some really intense team play. Apart from that another nice addition is that you'll be able to use jump packs which allow you to tackle your opponent in a completely different way because even at higher floors of any building you're in you will never be completely safe and able to stay there to camp your position because you can always get surprised by an opponent who jumped through a window behind you. These jump packs will also allow you to either jump on the back of a friendly titan and ride along with him or you can use it to jump on an enemy titan's back and attack at its vulnerable parts from there. Apart from that, each pilot class will also have some weapons available to defend themselves against a titan like for example our grenade to blind them or just simple anti-tank missiles, although it is advised to tackle a titan with at least two players on foot because you do die quickly on your own. However, if the pressure gets a little too high, you can always turn to the use of your burn cards, which are basically extra perks you can use during one lifetime, meaning that it will only last until you die. Titans themselves can defend itself in various ways, variating from simple dashing to avoid heat-seeking missiles, or just use a vortex shield to fling back the poop that an enemy threw at you. And if things get messy in your titan, you can always still use your ejection seat. One major disappointment I gotta mention though, is that the environment is not destructible. You won't even scratch a building with a missile, which is a shame to be honest, but according to the developers it was a necessary decision that they had to make in order to keep the game nicely balanced. Another disappointment is that there is no single player, although they do make an effort to tell a story, but it is told throughout cutscenes between missions. So that might feel awkward to some people, but I can say with certainty that it does not break down on the pacing of the multiplayer missions. Like I said before, this game lacks a few unlocks, but nothing is known for sure yet. It might improve or it might not. The marketing branch of Respawn just didn't release a damn thing on that topic, making it hard to predict what the full game will deliver in terms of content. However, there are some things in terms of content that you can assume to be set and finished and that's the number of classes and types of titans. There are only three classes and three titans available at first, with three extra slots that will allow you to build your own class or titan after you've reached level 10. Although building your own titan or class will only allow you to choose between parts and ability that already exist within the three standard presets of titans and classes. So that only allows you to mix up some of the abilities or parts, but it doesn't leave much room for many extras within the customization menu. The only three types of titans you can switch between are the Strider, Atlas and Ogre, with the first one being the most mobile version and the last one being the slow tank version. Now when you build your own titan, after you've reached level 10 you can base yourself on a chassis where you have three types of, which are the Assault, Tank and Artillery class. The classes of the pilots also only consist of three options, being the Rifleman, Assassin and CQB class, each with your own main weapon and ability, like for example cloaking or a stim pack for the Assassin's class. Once you've reached level 9, you can also unlock new weapons like the longbow sniper rifle, but besides this one and a carbine version of the rifleman's main weapon and a compact submachine gun, there isn't that much more weapons to unlock unfortunately. Now the maps themselves seem nicely designed, but often they feel rather small when you're running around in a titan, while on foot they will feel sufficiently large. Or another disappointment is the lack of the ability to destroy your environments like I previously mentioned, which all adds up to a few rather large shortcomings if you also count the bad AI. In the end, I think this game has a lot to offer in terms of gameplay, team play and competition, but the lack of a single player campaign and the fact that the AI is stupid as fuck and the environments aren't destructible and that the customization is rather limited, I personally think that this game won't be the big system seller on the Xbox One like Microsoft hoped it would be, especially if you keep in mind that on the Xbox One it cannot even run on a 1080p resolution, so on the Xbox One the textures will look like something from an early Xbox 360 title, so my advice is to definitely buy it on the PC, because that experience will be a lot better in my opinion, not to mention that the PC version is also a lot cheaper than the Xbox One version. My name is Dreamon the Belgian Waffle, I've been your host for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you guys next time.
By the way, if you guys are able, please share and favorite these videos. If you're already a subscriber, it would help me out a lot.